Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, happy Saturday and welcome back to 52 times Britain was a bell end the history you didn't get taught at school this week's story is called we aren't above disguising ourselves as Chinese merchants in order to steal tea as we've already established there's nothing the British liked more in the 19th century than tea and stealing things that weren't ours Robert Fortune and the British East India Company found a way of combining both loves while also mixing in our lesser known third love of doing offensive impersonations of people with whom we had beef. As discussed earlier in the book, in the 1840s China had a monopoly on the tea industry and we'd do anything to get our hands on it. The first opium war, where we attacked a friendly nation to make them accept opium in return for tea, made the British think that maybe we should find a backup way of getting our tea-stained fingers on it. The East India Company, ears pricking up when they heard there might be an opportunity to steal some shit, swooped in and recruited Scottish botanist Robert Ford. They tasked Ford with getting samples of tea from China and transporting them to India where they could grow the plants themselves without the hassle of having to pay money for it. The main problem was that Chinese producers closely guarded the secrets of how they cultivated the plants. They were pretty much the only producers in the world, and it was, and still is, the earth's favourite drink. China forbade selling tea plants, and it was going to take a really batshit scheme to get the secrets from them. Saying, hey, would you mind us just taking a look at that for a second, then cheesing it, just wasn't going to work. This was going to take all of our cunning, as anyone who embarked on, in mis on this mission would risk being flayed alive, the penalty for piracy at the time. Eventually, we shaved Robert and attached a fake lump of hair to the back of his bald head to make it look like a queue, the long braided clump of hair favoured by the Qing dynasty at the time. He then disguised himself as a Chinese merchant and moved around China, illegally travelling far away from the areas around the ports that Europeans were allowed in at the time. If anyone was to get suspicious of him and ask, e.g., why are you a full foot taller than the average Chinese person at the time we are currently living in? He would reply genuinely, I am Chinese from a distant province before, <laughs> beyond the Great Wall in a thick Scottish accent. Rather than risk angering an official, he'd find they would kowtow to him rather than question further. Even though his accent was so strong, he might, <laughs> he might as well have hit him with a rendition of Old Lang Syne in the bagpipes. He went off into the mountains learning how to make tea at a time when China was so secretive we didn't even know that black tea and green tea came from the same plant. On his mission he was able to smuggle many young tea plants, seeds and tea growers to India, breaking China's monopoly on tea and their entire tea-based economy in the process. All because when people saw an obviously Scottish man dressed up as a Chinese person, none of them thought they should report it. Probably because it's not something you would expect a sane adult to do outside of cartoons. The end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press the wee bell notification. And a huge big thank you to all my subscribers, patrons and members. See you next week. Bye bye.